Shalom, shalom, brothers and sisters in Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He is the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the ending, who was and is and is to come. He is the Lord, God Almighty, Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah. Amen. That's according to Isaiah 9, verse 6, Micah 5, verse 2, Revelations 1, John chapter 1, and Colossians chapter 1. They all speak of Yeshua, Jesus, as God Almighty, as God in the flesh. Amen. I believe the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the three, are one. According to John 14 and 1 John 5, verse 7, in the King James Bible. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, I just want to talk today about Israel and everything that's going on with Israel and uh, how the body of Christ is so divided on whether or not, you know, the Jews in Israel are the true Jews and if they're the synagogue of Satan and uh, all of these other things. And the Bible says that we should be of one mind and one accord. And so I want to talk about how I believe uh, that Scripture tells us definitely that those who are living in Israel are the true Jews. Now, it's, it's really troubling to see brothers and sisters just write off an entire nation and say that they're all the synagogue of Satan. And I don't think that's true. I don't think that's correct. And I think it's doing a disservice not only to God, uh, but to the people there in Israel as well. And so I want to read some scripture today out of the Bible. I have my King James Bible here. And uh, I want to talk about how Israel was called back into the land in 1948, and that was a prophecy uh, for Daniel's 70th week. Now, we know that the nation of Israel has to be back in the Holy Land for Daniel's 70th week to be complete. And there's just so much lining up. It's just incredible for people to say that all the Jews that are in Israel are the synagogue of Satan, that they're all just counterfeits. And so let's see what Ezekiel 36 says. Now, this is Ezekiel 36, verses uh, 17 onward. Son of man, when the house of Israel dwelt in their own land, they defiled it by their own way and by their doings. Their way was before me as the uncleanness of a removed woman. Wherefore, I poured out my fury upon them for the blood that they shed upon the land and for their idols wherewith they had polluted it. And I had scattered them among the heathen, and they were dispersed through the countries according to their way, and according to their doings I judged them. And when they entered unto the heathen wherever they went, they profaned my holy name. When they said to them, These are the people of the Lord, and are gone forth out of his land. But I had pity for my holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the heathen wherever they went. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, I do not this for your sakes, O house of Israel, but for my holy name's sake, which ye have profaned among the heathen wherever ye went. And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, saith the Lord God, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. Ezekiel thirty six twenty four. For I will take you from among the heathen, and gather you out of the countries, or all the countries, and will bring you into your own land. Okay, now that I believe is in 1948. Israel was taken out of their land after they crucified their own Messiah. That's in Daniel 9.26. And because they crucified Christ and denied him, but only a remnant believed, they were taken away from being a nation. 
And that is the fig tree that withered up. Just as Jesus prophesied, he said there was no fruit on the fig tree, so he cursed it, and it withered up. Okay, so Israel was replanted in 1948 for the fig tree generation. Now, the reason why Israel was scattered was not only because they crucified their own Messiah, it's because they were full of sin. They were full of wickedness and idolatry and their own traditions. Okay, just like a lot of churches today, they follow their own traditions, their own teachings, their own man-made doctrines. Okay, and God is shutting a lot of churches down, exposing a lot of wolves. Amen. Ezekiel 36, 24, For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness, and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. And ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. I will also save you from all your uncleanness, and I will call for the corn and will increase it and lay no famine upon you. And it goes on to say all the things that the Lord will do for them. This is Ezekiel 36, 33. Thus saith the Lord God, In the day that I have cleansed you from all your iniquities, I will also cause you to dwell in the cities, and the waste shall be builded. And the desolate land shall be tilled, whereas it lay desolate in the sight of all that passed by. Okay, now, we see that God brought Israel back into the land. Okay, now, they obviously are still full of sin and wickedness. But I believe in Daniel's 70th week, okay, it will be the, for the purification of Israel. And Zechariah 13 and 14 talks about a one-third of Israel being purified. And Zechariah 12 says that they shall know me whom they have pierced. Okay, so I believe that a remnant of Israel in Daniel's 70th week will receive the true Messiah, Yeshua Jesus, and be saved. Now, what are the chances that the tribulation is about to start, the new world order is already in place, the Antichrist is appearing very soon, and the, the Israel that we know is a false Israel? How, how could that be? Okay, that, that can't be because the Bible says that God would bring back Israel in these last days and restore them as a nation. And we already see that they're getting ready to start rebuilding the third temple. So how could that be a false, you know, a, a false people of Jewish descent? I mean, they have the Torah, they have the scrolls, they have, you know, all the history. They were nearly extinct or <laughs> nearly killed off in World War II, okay, by Hitler which was a satanic ploy to cleanse the earth from all of the Jewish seed so that the prophecies of God would not come to pass. And after all of that suffering and humiliation that Israel suffered, now they're back in their land and people are saying, oh, that's not the real Israel. Uh, but, you know, scripture says they'll be back in the land for the tribulation period because it's Daniel's 70th week. It's Jacob's trouble Okay, it's not the false Jacob's trouble. <laughs> okay, so please, let's just, let's, let's uh, reason together here. Amen. Now, what a lot of people are saying is that, you know, the Israel today, oh, they're all synagogue of Satan. And they take certain verses from Revelation that talks about the synagogue of Satan. And they say, oh, that's talking about the nation of Israel. 
Is that true? <laughs> I don't think so. Okay, because there are false Jews. And I think those are the Zuckerbergs, the Rothschild, the very top elite people who basically give themselves fake Jewish names to desecrate the Jewish people to destroy their reputation, in my personal opinion. That's what I believe. They're basically masquerading as Jews, these Luciferian elite, and they do all this evil under the Jewish names, okay? So we have to distinguish, okay, which ones are the true Jews, which ones are not, okay? I don't think that all of the Jews in Israel are false Jews. I mean, that's just ridiculous in my opinion. Now, there are a lot of corrupt Jews, and that's why I believe Zechariah 12 says that I'm sorry, Zechariah 13 says that, you know, two-thirds of Israel will be cut off. And I think that's because there are a lot of corrupt people, just like here in America. There's a lot of corrupt Christians who claim to be Christians, yet they still live in sin and ungodliness, and uh, they don't follow Christ. Okay, so are we going to say that, oh, the Christian religion is fake because there's some bad Christians, because there's some false Christians? I don't think that's fair to say. Now, in Romans 11, it says, I say then, has God cast away his people? God forbid. For I am also an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. I believe this is Apostle Paul in chapter 11 speaking or writing. And it says, God has not cast away his people, which he, which he foreknew. And it says, What ye not know that the scripture say of Elijah, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed the prophets and dig down the altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I reserved to myself seven thousand men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Okay, so the prophet Elijah wanted the nation of Israel destroyed. But God is saying, no, we can't cast away the whole nation because there's a remnant who is still going to be saved. Amen. And verse 5, it says in Romans 11, Even so then, at this present time also, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. And if by grace, then it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace, but it be of works. Then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. Okay, so God is saying, I believe through the apostle, that the remnant of Israel will be saved by grace. Just as the, the gospel went to the Gentiles by grace, okay, God is going to save a remnant of Israel by grace. Not because they're great, but God will purify a people for his namesake. Amen. And all the nations will know that he is a God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob when he sanctifies the people living in the borders of Israel, which according to the Bible is from the great river Euphrates to the river Egypt, okay, the Nile River, which Israel is presently in. It's in that allotted land. And it goes on to say, What then? Israel has not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. According as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, uh, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. And David saith, Let their table be made a snare, and a trap, and a stumbling block, and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened, that they may not see, and bow down their back always. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. But rather through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles, for to provoke them to jealousy. Now if the fall of them be the riches of the world, and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness. For I speak to you Gentiles inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles. I magnify mine office. Now, it goes on to say that Apostle Paul says that Christians should provoke the Jews to jealousy so that some of them might be saved from their blindness. 
For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? For if the fr first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. And if some of the branches be broken off, and now being a wild olive tree were grafted in among them, and with them that partakest of the root and the fatness of the oil tree. Okay, this is talking about Israel, the nation being cut off from the root. Okay, what, what is the root? You might say that Enoch and Noah and uh, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob were the roots of the tree. <laughs> okay, and out of them came, came uh, Judah and David and so on and so forth. Now... The, the nation of Israel was cut off as a branch, but we as a wild olive tree were grafted in. And it says, And if some of the branch, branches be broken off, and now being a wild olive tree were grafted in among them, uh, and with them the partakest of the root and the fatness of the olive tree. It says, Boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, that bears not the root, but the root thee. Thou wilt say then, The branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief, speaking of Israel, they were broken off, because they did not believe in Christ. And thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, speaking to the Christians, but fear. For if God spare not the natural branches, take heed lest he also spare not thee, speaking of the Christians. Behold therefore the goodness and severity of God on them which fell severity, but toward thee goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shall be cut off. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again." Speaking of Israel, the nation. And then it goes on to say in verse 25, skipping down a little bit, For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Okay, so once Christ was crucified and Israel was destroyed as a nation, okay, that is the time of the Gentiles when all the uh, gospel messengers went to all the nations of the Gentiles. And once all the Gentiles that can be saved are saved, then God will once again focus on the nation of Israel, which we see today. And that is Daniel's 70th week, and it begins with a covenant made by the Antichrist in many nations. Now, I believe this is going to involve a two-stage solution, the Abraham Accords and the rebuilding of the Third Temple. Okay, Daniel 9.27. It says, And they also, if they abide not, still in unbelief, shall be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. Okay, so we know that a Jew today can be saved if they receive the gospel. But as a nation, as a whole, they are still blinded because partly of their sin, part of their sentence in Daniel chapter 9, the 70 weeks of Daniel. And in verse 26, it says, And so, now this is after the fullness of the Gentiles, it says, And so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the Deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sakes. Okay, so... So God is going to save a remnant of Israel. That is the Israel today. <laughs> okay. Now let's take a look at Psalm 69. And this is a Psalm of David. And he basically talks about the crucifixion of the Messiah and blindness coming to Israel. In Psalm 69, verse 16, it says... Hear, O me, O Lord, for thy loving kindness is good. Turn unto me according to the multitude of thy tender mercies. 
And hide not thy face from thy servant, for I am in trouble. Hear me speedily. Draw near unto my soul, and redeem it. Deliver me because of mine enemies. Thou hast known my reproach and my shame, and my dishonor mine adversaries are all before thee. Reproach has broken my heart, and I am full of heaviness. And I looked for some to take pity, but there is none, and for comforters, but I found none. Now some might say, oh, this is just David speaking of his troubles during his life. But then it says in verse 21, They gave me also gall for my meat, and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. Well, if you know about the New Testament, okay, Christ was on the cross, and one of his last requests was that he would have something to drink. He said, I thirst. And the Roman centurions or whatever gave him uh, vinegar on a sponge. That is the prophecy here in uh, Psalm 69. And it says, And they gave me vinegar to drink. Let their table, speaking of Israel, let their table become a snare before them, and that which should have been for their welfare, let it become a trap. This is what is quoted in Romans 11. Let their eyes be darkened, that they not see, and make their loins continually to shake. Okay, so here we see that David is calling for God to blind the nation of Israel. Okay, and that is because they crucified their Messiah and they gave him vinegar to drink. And uh, so, again, God brought Israel back in the land, 1948, the fig tree generation, to save a remnant to take away uh, their blindness. And it is the final seven weeks of the Daniel's uh, 70 weeks prophecy for the nation. And it says in Daniel 9... Now in Daniel chapter 9 it says in verse 24, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish a transgression, to make an end of sins, and to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. And so Israel is not going to be purified of their sins until Daniel's 70th week. That's why there's so much sin and corruption in Israel today. And Revelation 11 says that they are like Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay, let's go ahead and read that in Revelation 11. Now, Revelation 11 talks about the rebuilding of the third temple or the rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem. And it says, And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise, and measure the temple of God, and the altar, and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple leave out, and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. And the holy city shall they tread underfoot for forty and two months. I believe that is after the abomination of desolation. The final three and a half years of Daniel's 70th week, they will tread the outer courtyards, uh, you know, when the Antichrist invades Jerusalem and commits the abomination of desolation. And it says, And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand and two hundred and threescore day, days clothed in sackcloth. I believe that is, the, I believe the two witnesses prophesy for the three and a half years, the first three and a half years of the seven year uh, covenant. And then the Antichrist will invade Jerusalem with the armies of Gog and Magog, probably. And they will tread on the outer courtyard for 42 months, three and a half years. And then they will fight against Christ at the Battle of Armageddon, speaking of the Antichrist and his armies. And it says here, These are the two olive trees, speaking of the two witnesses, and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceeds out of their mouth and devours their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven, and it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood, and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. 
And they shall have finished their testimony when the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. I personally believe that's when the Antichrist invades Jerusalem in the midst of the week and commits the abomination of desolation. I believe he will be empowered by the spirit of Apollyon, the, the beast from the bottomless pit. And it says, And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. So there it says that the two witnesses will be uh, killed in Jerusalem, okay, where the Lord was crucified. Now, Christ was crucified outside the city, but it was in Jerusalem uh, nonetheless. And they of the people and kindreds and the tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. Okay, that's in Israel. That's about to happen. <laughs> okay, these are the Jews, okay, who are brought back into the land. So that's what I believe. I think the Bible clearly supports that information. And uh, I pray that you would carefully consider this because we as Bible students, Bible teachers, okay, we don't want to give people wrong information and say that those people in Israel are not Jews when in actuality they are the Jews that God brought back uh, to save, okay? So it's very important that we don't get this wrong and that we are led by the Holy Spirit, amen? And if you don't know Jesus Yeshua as your Lord and Savior, please confess and forsake your sins. Believe that He is God, that He died for your sins and rose again on the third day as the Lamb of God, and uh, you will have reconciliation and forgiveness but you must continue in his words according to the New Testament and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit and be reborn. Amen. I hope to see you all in heaven very soon. I believe the rapture could be any day. I don't believe any man knows the day or hour, so we should just be ready at all times. And shalom until next time. Amen.